Live from Caroline's on Broadway, Sirius XM presents Summer Sam 4. We've got a very, a very busy show this afternoon, and I appreciate all you guys coming out for it. Uh, are we all excited for SummerSlam this Sunday? Yeah. On the WWE Network? I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but uh, a lot of titles are going to be on the line at SummerSlam. One of those titles that's going to be on the line is the... Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> he was right, though. It is the Raw Women's Championship. Um, and the person who's going to be defending that title is my first guest here at SummerSlam 4, ladies and gentlemen, the Raw Women's Champion, Alexa Bliss. Yeah, you can sit down. Make yourself comfortable, Alexa. Make yourself comfortable. Welcome, and thank you for being here. That's, uh... I appreciate you thinking I'm that tall, but... <laughs> well, welcome. Um, thank you. And thank you for being here. This is a big, big week for you, and I appreciate you making the time. Um, has it clicked in yet? I mean, I know it's early in the week technically, but has it clicked in that... You're about to have you, one of the biggest good? matches. I'm great. Okay. I'm great. I'm the last professional broadcaster. I don't know if anybody <laughs> told you. <laughs> <laughs> Has it clicked in yet that you're about to have one of, if not the biggest matches of your career on Sunday? Um, yes and no. You know, I think of every match as, you know, one of the biggest opportunities of my career because, you know, with WWE or anything, if you don't deliver on the opportunity, the opportunity may never come back again. Um, but I'm especially excited for this match because, you know, it is against Ronda Rousey, who has made a name for herself in UFC, you know, Hall of Famer, and she's an amazing athlete. And I'm just really excited to see how it's going to go. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, I mean, if you look at me in WWE, I haven't been the toughest champion. <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like there's ways around it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. like, I can be quicker than her, I think. I can be... <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically, right? <laughs> yeah. I can be smarter than her. Right. And, you know, I can just, you know, watch, watch her flaws, exploit them, and use them to my advantage. Right. Look, you've been, you've been champion more times than she has. Exactly. So that's a win in your column. Exactly. You, you know, know. I, I understand she's had, like, three matches. Right. Five-time right. champion. So there is a difference. Do you know what I'm saying? There is a difference. <laughs> what, what did uh, you all in the locker room think? Because I can only speak from the fan perspective that there was this sort of, I don't know, this feeling of we don't know how well Ronda's going to do in a WWE ring because, you know, WWE and UFC is so different. Um, and I think that I can speak for all fans when we watched her at WrestleMania and everybody was kind of blown away by how good she is at this. What was the feeling with you in the locker room before the WrestleMania match and then once you saw it? Um, personally, like I can't speak for the whole locker room, but personally for me, I was really excited to see her in the ring because, you know, she is one of the top athletes in the world and is deemed, you know, the baddest woman on the planet. And to watch someone at her caliber train differently and go through the hard work, go through the struggle to do what we do, I feel like it just legitimizes what we do even more. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. in, a, in a way, because a lot of people, you know, have their opinions on WWE and UFC, the difference between that. But when you take their top athlete and put them in our ring and see them succeed, it shows, you know, that the training may be different, but it's just as hard in the same way. And so I was personally excited to see how she was going to do in WrestleMania because, you know, I feel like Ronda is what we needed for the women's evolution right now because, you know, we have women from every background imaginable, every athletic background, you know, or, you know, any anything really. And to have someone like her, we don't have that yet. So for me, I was really excited because that's what the evolution is about is bringing in diverse group of women from every background and put them in the ring and see what happens. And yeah. I personally, I was really excited about that. And I think the fact that when you watched her, you could see the commitment that she had to this really legitimized it in the sense that she could. She's got a big name. She's a well-known athlete. She could kind of go in and half-ass and still collect a paycheck, but she didn't. No. Right? Like she went yeah. – you could tell she had gone through the training. She had done the work, 
And I think that that's what, you know, kind of made women's wrestling in WWE shine so brightly. Oh, absolutely. In that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you go into this any differently knowing that mainstream is watching this match like no other match, meaning that there's this interest in Ronda Rousey outside of the WWE world that they want to see what does she do in a WWE ring? And even though we've seen three matches, people who tune into SummerSlam that don't necessarily watch Raw every week are like, I want to see this Ronda Rousey match. And this is the match that you're in. Do you go in any differently? No. With that thought, or is it no, always just every sort of match is the same. You know, you go in, you do what you're supposed to do. You get in the right focus, the right mentality. I, I treat, so with that, you say there's outside, outside eyes. I get that. But there was also outside eyes at WrestleMania. People who necessarily don't watch Raw or SmackDown, they'll tune into WrestleMania. And when you go out in the crowd, there's 80,000 people. But when you walk into the ring, the ring is the same size. Right. And that's how I think about it. Like, that is home. The ring is home. And, you know, it doesn't matter how many people are watching. You hope there's more people watching. I'm glad that there's outside eyes watching because then it brings people into what we do and into the WWE universe. And that's what we need is more people tuning in. And if we have to bring mainstream people in to do that, that's great. Right, right. At what point in your career did you really start to feel like the ring was home? Not in NXT. <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, that's like one of the <laughs> remarkable things about your career, right, is that you weren't one of these, like, people in NXT that people were like, oh, wait till she comes to the main Not roster. Not at She's, all. Yeah. No. Right. At all. <laughs> <laughs> Even a little. No. None. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so what point? at what point did you go, like, you know what? This is where I belong. I think during the draft. And it wasn't like this is where I belong. It's like I got to show this is where I belong. Because in NXT, obviously, I wasn't a highlighted character. I wasn't a four horse woman. I wasn't, you know, something that people were excited to see. Um, <laughs> that's but that's true. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll admit that. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I was a very underwhelming draft pick. <laughs> I was. Um, but... I knew that, you know, I remember my first promo on SmackDown. It was during the draft. I was thinking, okay, if there's one thing I can do, it's somewhat speak on a microphone. And if that's going to set me aside from, because we had every person drafted at the same time. So what's going to separate you from everyone else? And I was like, okay, I can kind of talk some crap. Um, right. And then my first promo was something like a word like blistertation or blistertation. And I went, what the hell is this? <laughs> And I was like, this is my moment, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to mess up. Right. But it was that moment that I was in I was in Gorilla, and I was standing back there, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to lie. I know that people are not excited to see me here, so I have to come in under the radar and kick down the door. Right. And show that I deserve to be here. You know, I wasn't an indie wrestler. I wasn't, you know, a four horsewoman. I wasn't featured in – I was never on a takeover match. I never held a title. I was a manager, and so I had to show, you know, I deserve to be here, and if they're not going to see it, I'm going to force them to see it. Did an insecurity ever build up in the NXT run, like, oh, maybe this is, maybe the reason I don't have these matches is because they just don't see that in me, or is that not your personality type? Absolutely. It did? Absolutely. You know, I remember when I was um, a, a good guy, I was wearing tutus and throwing glitter and... <laughs> Glitter, I thought I was a Disney. Glitz, sparkle, bliss? Yeah. Was that it? That sure was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember. So that was me, okay? That's the thing. Like, I love all things Disney. Right. And I love, it was my idea to, like, throw glitter and wear a tutu. <laughs> and if you ever look back and see my first tutu, it went down to my knees. It was really embarrassing. But. Did you realize that this was wrestling and you were trying to target Disney fans? Yes. <laughs> like, when you're like. I know what wrestling fans are like, glitter, there's not enough. But there are children out there who watch. And, like, so I'm going to go to the side for a second. And um, so off topic, and right. then I'll, I'll bring it back around. I trust you. My, uh, my tryout, I was asked why I wanted to be in WWE. And mind you, my tryout, I had submitted a video. I was the, apparently the only person that submitted my own video to get the tryout, and it was a casting call, and there's all these models walking around, and I texted my mom, I was like, well, I'm not making it. Um, I texted my mom, and I was like, I'm not gonna, uh, this is, uh, I, I'm five foot, these girls are Hollywood models walking around, and uh, they told us do something to make you stand out, and I remember thinking of like American Idol people making themselves look like idiots, so I wasn't gonna do that. 
Um, so I was asked why I wanted to be in WWE and just to get the attention because I, I was and I was a fan too. You know what I mean? Like I uh-huh. walked in, I saw Triple H. I was like, oh my God, did you know you're Triple H? And <laughs> oh, that was me. Totally me. I did that. And um, Did he know? I think so. He did know. Okay. I think okay. so. I think the thought crossed his mind. Uh, but like I remember these other girls in the trial being like, I have no idea who this guy is, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I walked in and I almost had a heart attack. I was like, oh my God, you're Triple H. Did you know <laughs> Did you know you're Triple H? And you're in the same room as me. Like I, Very embarrassing. But they asked why I want to be in WWE. And so to stand out, I said, I really want to be Tinkerbell at Disney. And I'm hoping this gets my foot in the door. Wow. So you did like the Jeff Jarrett bad guy, I'm just here to get into country music thing, but in real life. I. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a joke, okay? It was a joke. They, they probably took up. it as a joke. They, they probably did. Like, ah. But it caught their attention. They looked up and I was like, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm totally kidding. My family and I, we all watch wrestling. Like my, my grandma used to scare us with the great kabuki, tell us that he would come and get us if we didn't behave. And so like, I was just like, I had my wrestling knowledge and I was just like, I was like, well, that'll catch someone's attention. It sure did. Um, well, yeah, I think, I think that's the only way you recover from that statement is a reference to the great kabuki. Yeah. And I was just like, like this is, this is, yeah. I was like, oh my God. So that was like, Cause I'm kind of a smart ass, and so like that was like, I'm not gonna go out there and be like, oh, ha, <laughs> what, look at me, I have my attention. I was just like, I'm gonna make a smart ass comment and hope it pays off. Right. Um, it did. Uh, but uh. But then you legitimately transformed that I character did. into a Disney princess. Yeah. So bringing it back around. Right. So I was like, I'm gonna be Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna have a, a finisher called a Sparkle Splash, and I'm gonna <laughs> be Tinkerbell. And I'm going to have a move, and I'm going to call it a glitter blizzard for why, I don't know. Like, I want you to take no offense to this because you're one of the greats, but that's literally like your aunt's bad ideas. Oh, my gosh. It was terrible. It was terrible ideas. What about like a sparkle splash? Does anybody do anything like that? So someone recommended it to me as a joke, (laughs) and I took (laughs) it seriously. (laughs) (laughs) I was so embarrassed that after I, I realized it was a joke after, but people still call it that, like... My, the people that I work with, they're always like, oh, hit, hit, do the sparkle splash thing. And I'm like, it's a twisted bliss. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm like, those days are gone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so when I was throwing glitter and wearing tutus, I was not booked, surprisingly. <laughs> 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 and um, I remember thinking like, oh my gosh, this isn't working out. What am I going to do? Like, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I'm not doing it right. And, you know, these girls that I'm in the ring with are so good and I'm not, I don't have the experience they have. And, you know, I just had, you know, my gymnastics background to kind of fall onto. And um, I didn't, because I didn't know, like I'd watched WWE growing up. It was like the thing that my family did, but I didn't know that there was like wrestling schools. And like, I didn't know that, I just thought people were WWE superstars. Like they were born and one day they became a superstar. I just, <laughs> right. in my mind, that's just how it happened. And that's not how it happens? Apparently not. Oh. And um, I just remember that and just, I just remember being like, oh my gosh. And then I was told, um, to come up with ideas, different ideas. And I was like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Um, <laughs> and so that's when um, I pitched to be with Blake and Murphy. And we were, we pitched this idea for eight months before it happened. We had an entrance, we did uh, house shows, live event shows uh, at the PC where we would pitch the idea and I would manage them and I would hit the boys with the sparkle splash at the time. And this was like an idea that we really wanted to push for but I still wanted to be a good guy <laughs> while they were the bad guys. And they were like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Right. So I would actually get really bad anxiety trying to, we'd have to do like heat drills where we would like beat up someone in the ring and I would get mad anxiety over it. And I would, I cried once in the ring. I was like, I can't do this. I don't, I don't know how to be mean. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> it was bad. Now was and it, was it the act of being mean that you didn't want to do? Was it, you didn't like people booing you? No, it was, it was the act of being mean. Cause I would just be like, it, it was very much like Ricky Bobby. Like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Like, what do I, what do, I do? Do you know what I mean? Like, when something's so unnatural to you, it, you, just, you just get uncomfortable, and I would clam up, and I would just freak out, and I'd be like, oh, my God, I don't know how to do this. And I would get really bad anxiety, and then when I was put with Blake and Murphy, I was like, okay, I have to do this. I have to run with it, or I'm not going to have a job. Right. And I was like, I have to run with it, and I have to try, you know, whatever I can. And I was very grateful to be able to be with Blake and Murphy because I – was able to develop the character without having to focus on matches and focus on, you know, storyline and everything like that. So I was able to really develop the Alexa Bliss persona, and that was all because of Blake and Murphy. And I 
have always said I would not be Alexa Bliss without them. And so that's like... Which is why you get to the main roster and you know you can talk so well because you've spent months and months and months and months figuring out exactly what that character is. Yes. So it seems like a lot in your life, or at least in your professional life, is, is comes about from film. Because you started, you're like, I'm going to be a good guy. Yep. It's going to be Disney princess. And then you go, now I need to be a bad guy. Let's go Freddy Krueger. Yeah, exactly. Because that was literally, I what mean, that was. What was the, the transition? Yeah, it was yeah. Just straight, just like <laughs> Freddy Krueger. Right. And then, I mean, on the main roster, we've seen Harley Quinn, but we haven't seen a ton of other cosplay movie references. I had I Iron Man, Riddler, um, Chucky. Ch I forgot about Chucky. Yeah. So is this something that you wanted to do from the beginning? Like, I want to just pay homage to my favorite films? Kind of. It was like one of the, so it was with, uh, we first started the Iron Man stuff with Blake and Murphy, and I was like, are we even allowed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh answer is no right. um <laughs> but you have to go through like a whole like legal thing and so we were able to make it work which was really cool and i just loved it so much and i love you know movies and villains specifically and i kind of found my little comfort zone it was bringing my own personal life into the ring with me that was like kind of like a i don't know like a safety blanket for me was making the outfits according to uh characters that I love and would like to portray in my own way. Right. And um, it's, it's always a lot of fun, too, and it's it's really cool because, you know, I know, like, Rey Mysterio used to do it, and so that was kind of like, I was like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And actually, <laughs> when I was Glitter Glitz, I pitched to have the whole room go blue, and I was like, like Rey Mysterio! And they were <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I was like, what if it rained glitter? And they're like, no. Yeah. Enough with the glitter. <laughs> Actually, I got banned from using glitter for a little bit because the match after me, Tyler Breeze, had uh, glitter all over his back. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you get it back? Did they forget that that They happened? made me wear little gloves on my hands to, like, blow the glitter and then take them off, but they were socks because I never had gloves, so I had to cut socks <laughs> and just, like, put them... <laughs> <laughs> you know, thrifty. <laughs> I, I do like your commitment, though, to using the glitter. Like, yeah, no, we I was have like, I was this. like, no, watch this, and I like take my socks off. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other movie references that you want to do? Are you doing anything for Sunday? Um, so I have. <laughs> depends on if my gear comes. I see. Uh, so SummerSlam last year, I had a vest made, and it was according to Disney Descendants. Um, last at WrestleMania, um, it was supposed to be kind of like Maleficent, -y, but it didn't really come across. Uh, so this one is kind of Ursula themed, the Ursula Ooh. colors. That's very, very exciting. She's the villain from The Little Mermaid. Yeah, Everybody villain like, from The Little Mermaid. Ooh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the villain from The Little Mermaid. It's the same colors. So when you, you kind of came to the main roster feeling like you had something to prove in the sense Absolutely. that there was all this buzz around Becky Bailey, Charlotte, Sasha. And like, oh yeah, I guess Alexa's here too. At what point did you realize like, no, I've, I've. I've cemented my spot. Um, I don't really think that's a thing. Like, I don't think anyone's really cemented. I feel like you have to prove yourself every opportunity that you get. For me, it's very like, I feel like I can always do better and always, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. I don't feel like, I don't know. I feel like there's always going to be, uh, especially like with social media and, you know, how passionate the WWE Universe is, people are always going to say that you're not deserving no matter what. And so it's my goal is always to be, like, proving that I kind of am. But right. I don't ever think it's like, oh, I deserve to be here. I'm cemented here. No, I don't think anyone is. You know, everyone has to keep working and keep proving themselves. But you can leave, like, you go, you can leave night by night and go, like, okay, tonight I proved it. Tomorrow I'm going to prove it again. But yeah, I guess, you yeah. Know I mean? You know, I think I think so. I mean... I just, I don't know, I just have a weird mentality. I'm just always like, tonight was a good night. Let's yeah. see how I'm going to do tomorrow. You know right. what I mean? Like, that's just like how, I don't know. How did you feel when you found out you were going to get your first championship? I was so excited. Yeah. Because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a champion. <laughs> Mind you, I found out a couple minutes before, but. <laughs> it was only a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah, like, literally, like, earlier that day. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I had to fly my parents in last minute. Because um, it was like earlier in the day, so I was wow. like, y'all need to catch a flight. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> um, so my parents were there. You know, it was TLC against Becky Lynch, my first title. And um, 
I was very excited, you know, because I'd never held a title before. Right. I'd never, I'd never won a match before. <laughs> 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 Your parents must have kind of suspected something was going to happen, though, if you're flying them in last minute. Well, it was TLC. So maybe it's just a yeah, pay-per-view. Yeah, you know what excited. I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, it was TLC. And my mother was a nervous wreck because she was like, are you going to go through a table? And I was like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, maybe. <laughs> uh, but, like, my mom's so nervous about everything. And then later that Christmas... Side note, she got me the ornaments of TLC, the little tables, ladders, and chairs, and then she gave me a Becky ornament. (laughs) (laughs) And her reasoning, oh, because she faced Becky at TLC. And I was like, you know I have an ornament. (laughs) 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 But yeah, I got a Becky ornament that Christmas. (laughs) So is your mom just like loving this entire ride? Oh my gosh, she is... The biggest supporter, you know, when I first told her I was trying out for WWE, she said, the hell you are. She's like, you are not. You were a fitness model, though. Yes. So it's well, not like I didn't model, but I competed in fitness. I was never oh, the model type. Yeah. You're in better shape than me is what I'm trying to say. I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, keyword. Um, that was like five years ago. Uh, yeah, so I was competing in fitness, and it was after college. You know, I had struggled with some eating issues, and so I – started competing to gain weight in a healthy way and I just became in love with it and I loved the you know the competitiveness of it and my trainer had told me WWE was having a tryout and I was like oh my god and so I had to make sure that he was like yeah I heard they're having a tryout or a casting call or something and so I like googled it and I went on WWE's site and it actually had like a link and it said do you want to be a WWE superstar I said yes I do (laughs) so I clicked on it I made this video which they showed on table for three right Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Not happy with it. Yeah, and so this was after I made the video and after I did the whole thing, and I was like, Mom, I'm trying out for WWE. She was like, the hell you are. (laughs) And I was like, why not? And she's like, Lexi, do you remember China? And I was like, yeah. They're like, she's like, you know, big, strong China, six-foot China. And I was like, (laughs) yeah. And mind you, I'm like, Yay big, just right. got out of college. Yeah. Yeah. Glittery and Tinkerbell. Yeah, yeah exactly. China. Yeah. I think I was wearing uh, sparkly Ugg boots at this in this during this conversation. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's actually how I showed up on my first day in NXT too. It's good. Um, and she was just like, No, you're not doing it. And so then I was like, Okay, sent in the video, got a tryout, was signed. But like the great irony of the story is that your mom didn't want you to try out because China and these women are so big, and now your mom is excited for you because you're competing against Ronda Rousey. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm arguably like, Thanks, the mom. greatest female fighter of all yeah. time. And she's like, yeah, go get him. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fun. She was the same, way, like, the same way with Naya. She's like, oh, you've got this. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, six... Six foot girl. She's like, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ronda Rousey. She's like, just, you know, just get her with one. I don't know. And I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> Thanks, did she, Mom. Did <laughs> she realize pretty quick, like, after? I mean, I think parents sometimes have this way of, like, when you're successful at a thing, doesn't matter what it is, they'll be like, this is great. Oh, so yeah. was, it, was it once, like, you got signed up and you're in NXT? Once that happens is when your mom is like, yeah, I wanted this for you the whole time. This is wonderful. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When I was a ring announcer, she was one of five people at the shows. You know what I mean? <laughs> like she was like, she had a she she had a sign that said I love the ring announcer. Like she was like, she was full on as soon as I started day one, she was just like, flip the switch. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got this match at SummerSlam. It's uh, you know, it uh, enormous enormous match. Uh, did was fighting Ronda Rousey, competing against Ronda Rousey, was that something that you were like, now that she's here, this is something, I, this is, that's a match that I need to have? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, as soon as she was signed, I said, I want to be in the ring with her. I want to be the one, <laughs> I was saying I want to be the one to beat her, <laughs> but <laughs> this was before I knew how much of a badass she really is. Yeah. And now I'm like, I, I want to I wanna beat her. I want to be the one to beat Ronda Rousey. That that's my goal. That's that's what I want to do. Do we think she's going to be able to? I don't <laughs> Although I feel like there is a built-in uh, bias. All these people are in the room with you right now. Yeah. Going like, yeah, we think. Someone over in my shirt. You know, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in a Ronda shirt here? Any rowdy shirts? I don't see any. 
I don't see any. Smart answer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah. So as soon as I, as soon as she came into WWE, I said I want to have a match with her and I want to be the one to beat her. And you know, it's been a lot of fun having you know the time to be able to say mean things about her, <laughs> and <laughs> and it's just been fun. You know what I mean? Because it's it's fun to like provoke, you know, poke the bear a little bit. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm really excited. Um, and you know. It's an honor to be in the ring with so someone of her caliber and her popularity and to, I mean, Hall of Famer. And it's awesome. And I think all around it makes all of us better performers because everyone has different backgrounds and different styles. So if we can adapt to their styles all around, it makes us better performers. There are many times when you watch Raw in interview segments, when you come out for promos, whatever, not you, but in general, the general you that the crowd tries to take over. And they've certainly done that in your segments, but you can, not all of them obviously, but you can, you can watch the faces of performers and there are performers that you're like, oh no, they're getting lost. Like, oh no, the crowd is taking over. And I feel like you're one of the best people at not allowing it. Like nice. you're, you're able to maintain I appreciate that. control. Do you feel like that's true? I mean, obviously, these people, Thanks, who, by guys. the way, they're clapping now, but they're the exact same people that try to take I know, the I was going to say, I'm you. pretty sure you guys are the ones that are yelling what at me. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, the what can't. <laughs> like, I, I, I interviewed Stone Cold before, like, years ago, and I was, it was when the what chants were getting really, really bad, like, they were doing it every segment, and he was like, all these guys need to do is change up their cadence. Yep. And the what chants go away. Yep. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's that simple. If you don't stop every position like this, there's no more. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> there's actually been times. It's crazy that you say that. There's actually been times where I'm reading over, you know, what I'm going to say. And I say, we need to change this because that opens it up for what's like, I know that has come out of my mouth before multiple times being like, I can't. I nope. this needs to continue on this way because people are going to start saying what? And then I'm going to have to be a smart ass and say something back. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's true. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't mean to say that word. I apologize. I think smart ass is okay. Okay. Yeah, smart. It's one word. It's a compound sorry, word. Sorry, I apologize. It's not the, yeah. I apologize. Uh, but do you know what I mean? Like, it's just you got to change up. He's completely right. You have to change up your cadence. You have to not allow that to happen. And you have to take control of the crowd because, you know, there's times where they have, they've scared people. Like, I, the Bailey, this is your life segment. Um <laughs> Even that one, I mean, <laughs> they've applauded everything you've said so far. Even these guys won't well, applaud. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> My point. <laughs> the girl that was Bailey's best friend, um, the crowd was yelling at her. And they were like, boring, what? And she had this fear on her face. And I felt so bad for this girl because they were just, like, chanting at her. And she just didn't know what to do. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. like, it, there was no hiding it. She, I'm pretty sure she was, like... She kept looking down. She kept looking at me like, what do I do? What do I do? And I'm just going, it's okay. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't stop. Just keep going. And it was just so crazy because, like, it's crazy to see, you know, how trained our athletes are because our athletes are trained to take control of that. It's amazing. And, you know, they, these actors that came in, they had no idea what to do. But, like, it just shows that, you know, our training at the Performance Center and promo classes and, you know, having Dusty there and everyone helping us take control of any situation and tell, think, having us think on our feet, it shows that, you know, what we do takes a skill and, yeah. and being able to adapt and, you know, talk to the crowd during, during the promos and, you know, let them in on it. You know what I mean? Like I, I love being that, I love having the crowd in on what I'm saying. Is that a tremendous amount of pride? Like when you, when you go back after a segment, like, like, a, like that you've, that you've won the crowd back when you're like, I know there was a moment here that they tried to sabotage and it was still successful. I turned him around, I got him back, and I got the message out. Is that this tremendous, like, not that many people can do that. Um, I think for me, it's it's like definitely like one of those, like, pat on the backs, like, heck yeah, I did it. <laughs> but, like, for me, it's, it's I want to make sure that I get the point across. I'm trying to tell a story, and I want to tell that story. And if the crowd tries to take it over, I try to make it to where the crowd's in on it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, so if they're if you're not gonna let me do it myself, you're gonna do it with me. Right. And but make we're sure getting that, to the destination. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> right. Whether you know it. I or will not. turn this car around, <laughs> but we are getting there. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, that's kind of like how. I mean, sometimes it can't be done though. There's even times where I'm just like, this can't be done. I'm, right. I'm just gonna keep talking. But even then, it doesn't <laughs> seem like you're shaking. It's just like you've almost like resigned to the fact that it's like, okay, well, we're going someplace else, but yeah, I'm still, I'll still be there. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, I'll be like, I got you. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah. We'll get there eventually. If I need to jump in the passenger seat, I'm staying in the front. <laughs> I'm not getting in the back seat. Yeah, but, but I'm in. going to the passenger seat because I want to. <laughs> yeah, that's my <laughs> choice. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. But when we get back, I want to open it up to a few of you to ask some questions. we got a couple minutes for you to ask Alexa Bliss questions. We'll be back with Summer Sam 4 at Caroline's on Broadway. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you all for waiting patiently here at Caroline's on Broadway. Summer Sam 4 and Alexa Bliss is here with me. Thank you for hanging out during that break. No, thank you. I mean, I was getting a little antsy, <laughs> I so know. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. We had a lot of small talk was happening. Yeah. It was very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> but um, now it's time for you guys to have uncomfortable small talk with Alexa Bliss, because we're going to open it up <laughs> to Q&A. Kathy Kelly, our grandmaster of ceremonies, is here. She's walking around. I'm giving her free reign, so you cannot accuse me of bias. And uh, Kathy, uh, who do you choose? My name is Rafiq Luizan, and my question to you, Alexa Blitz, looking fine today. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Somebody advised him to stop shooting his shot. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about going up against Ronda Rousey this Sunday? Um, I'm excited, I'm nervous, and I think that I am very known for not having the cleanest tactics of winning a match, so I may have to resort to that. Do you worry with somebody like Ronda Rousey that some of the stuff she does might hurt a lot? Next question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have Alex from New Jersey. Hello, how's it going? Um, I just want to know, you guys are always on the road. Does that not drive you crazy? So, before WWE, I was such a homebody. Like, I never left. I didn't leave Columbus until I had my WWE tryout. Like, I, I was home 24-7. Uh, there was, during the draft, so we travel every week of the year, all year round. Um, but there was, when we had the draft and the superstar shakeup uh, last WrestleMania, they took us off the live events for that one week. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be great. I have a weekend at home. I get to hang out with my pig, you know, and just, <laughs> like, you know, like, whatever, life stuff. I was home for two days, and I was like, I should be in Greensboro or something. You know what I mean? I, ha I got antsy, and you just become so accustomed to it that I felt out of place being at home. And it's, it's crazy because it's the new normal. And I personally love it because we get to go all these different places. And, you know, as long as you can pack enough to – live out of a suitcase it's it's great i personally i i love it what's the schedule like is it, i mean people talk about the performance center schedule being a lot you yep. know there's i mean because there's a lot to learn in a yes. short amount of time what is the 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 nxt performance center schedule how does it compare to the full-time on the road schedule so they're both very difficult mm -hmm. in completely different ways so the nxt schedule is six days a week um, sometimes you're there from 8 a.m., then you go straight to a show, and you're not home till 1 a.m. So that's six days a week. On the road, to give you kind of like an insight on my Friday, I travel on Fridays, come home on Tuesdays. Um, Friday, normally our flights are about 5, 6 a.m., so you're up at 3, you're at the airport by 4, you fly in to the town, you try to find food, you go straight to the show. Usually we get there about 5 p.m. The show ends around 10, 30, 11, and then you usually have a three to four hour car drive after that. So you're not getting home, getting to your hotel until 1, 2 a.m. So that's a 23 hour day. Now that's four days a week. And then- Every other week? No, every week. <laughs> Just wanted to make that every, clear. Yeah. Every <laughs> week. And so when you come home, Tuesdays, I'm asleep. <laughs> I'll wake up for SmackDown, but then I go back to sleep because you're so sleep deprived and um, you're just constantly going, 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 going. And then Wednesdays, you're catching up on your laundry and packing for the road. And Thursday, um, I just kind of chill out. And then Friday, you're back on the road again. Unbelievable. But Wednesday is your day. Yeah, Wednesday's my day. Yeah. Wednesday's <laughs> my Netflix, Uber Eats, in my Snuggie, hey, you know, just doing my own <laughs> thing. And I love it. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Kathy? We are with 11-year-old Kevin from the Bronx, and this is his third Summer Sam. Oh. Look at you. Yeah, buddy. What is your favorite I'm raising these children. What was that? What's your favorite WrestleMania? Ooh. Your favorite WrestleMania. 
I'd have to say my favorite WrestleMania in general was 30, but in my career was last year because uh, I got to do that really cool entrance. Yeah. That yeah. was so cool. <laughs> I was terrified. Uh, but, no, it was really cool. Uh, I loved last year's WrestleMania because it was in Orlando, and my family got to be there, and it was just it was a lot of fun. Like, last year's, like, I had – so <laughs> – I didn't know in Orlando WrestleMania, or yeah, not this past one, one before that. Right. I didn't know I had pyro. <laughs> 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 and you can see it on film. So it was so funny because like uh, all the other girls got pyro, and I was like, that's crazy, they got pyro. And I was like, do we get pyro? And like the other girls were like, no, I don't think we get pyro. And I walk out, and there's pyro, and I jump because <laughs> no one told me that I was going to have fireworks going off behind me. <laughs> it was a cool surprise, but you see me jump about a foot. Everybody's going to go back and watch Yeah, now. yeah. It was in Orlando. <laughs> uh, and then this past year, it was really cool. because, And they, they're both so special because I got to go in as champion on both ones. Now, I, I have bad luck at WrestleManias. I can't retain my title at WrestleManias. I think it's the nerves. You know what I mean? Such a grand <laughs> stage. Um, but, yeah, it's, like, really cool. And it's really, I don't know. They're just so special because, like, when you go in as champion, that's, like, awesome. And I just, I don't know. Yeah. For me. Yeah. yeah. Now, WrestleMania 30 was the, that's when you did the Triple H Triple entrance? H entrance, yeah. Okay, so that, and that brings me that was to, my a, favorite one. to a question about, uh, of course you develop a relationship with Triple H over the years in NXT. When you graduate from NXT, for lack of a better term, I guess, and go to the main roster, you know, obviously Triple H is there, but now Vince McMahon is there too. What is, for you, the transition like from, you know, having won over Triple H through your work to now also winning over Vince McMahon or had he already been won over from your previous work? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I don't know. I mean, you just kind of keep your head down and do your matches, and as long as things are going good, things are going good. I mean, I always ask for feedback. Yeah. I always ask for feedback on, um, you know, promos and matches and everything like that, and I, I feel like it's more of like a. I'm not trying to went over I'm trying to learn right do you know what I mean learn right. from them because you know obviously they know what they're doing <laughs> um, and when you can get the information directly from the people who know it's it makes your working relationship that much better right and that's just kind of how I always try to go for advice and because you never stop learning doesn't matter how much time you t do in NXT you never stop learning makes sense Kathy How did you learn how to do the creepy arm thing? The creepy arm <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's a gift. <laughs> no, um, so when I was in gymnastics, I, I've always been like very hyper flexible in my elbows. And when I was in gymnastics, my coaches used to actually have to stretch them like over, like I'd be standing behind them and they would have my arm and they would pull it in front of them to stretch it like my arms like this and they're just like pulling it and stretching it because if not my elbows would like lock out and they would hurt so I'd have to keep stretching them out because if not like they would like lock up and like get all sore and or would like get jolted so yeah it's just kind of something that I've just always been able to do and then I realized uh it helps me win matches <laughs> <laughs> there was an audible gasp in here when you just did like just a little bit of it. <laughs> All right, we have time for two more questions because Alexa Bliss is her SummerSlam week. She's very, very busy. We're with Keanu from Brooklyn. I have a question. Um, who was your uh, childhood hero wrestler growing up? Trish Stratus and Rey Mysterio. Good answer. Good answer. And let's go to our final question. Yeah. She's adorable, though. <laughs> Riley, Riley, what's your question for Alexa she has Bliss? A, she has a, an Alexa Bliss shirt on. I so saw I that. You look fantastic, and I like the pigtails. <laughs> How old is Riley? How old are you? Eight. Eight. Aw. Eight years old. I appreciate you being here. Do you have anything <laughs> you want to ask Alexa Bliss, Riley? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could See, avoid that. she's picking those. up. She's yeah. picking up on it quick. <laughs> Y'all taught her the what chance, didn't you? <laughs> Your favorite match? That's actually a great question. Your favorite match in your WWE career has been what? Survivor Series against Charlotte. Oh. That has been, that was my favorite. 
Now, um, <laughs> I wanted everybody uh, to take a second. Alexa Bliss just explained her schedule to you guys. You understand that SummerSlam weekend, that whole ske- the schedule that you just described, that's easy. SummerSlam weekend yeah. is where it gets That's when it insane, gets crazy. Yeah. Right? I mean, you were just like, there's, there's no sleep. No. There's no anything. It's just go, go, go. Caffeine and, and concealer. <laughs> The girls know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but she still made time for all of us here at Summer Sam 4. So let's give a giant round of applause to Alexa Bliss. Alexa, we thank you for being here. Thank you. We're going to go to break, and we'll be back with Samoa Joe. Stick around. Thank you. Thank you.